Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking spoon fishing for fall and winter bass. I'm going to show you guys the exact baits that we use, the different retrieves that we use, and some of the tricks and modifications that help us to get consistent bites throughout the fall and winter when bass are schooling deep. The spoon should be a major factor in your bass fishing arsenal. Whether you throw a jigging spoon or a flutter spoon, a spoon has a place. They get bit so consistently, especially by deeper water bass. We know that in the fall, bass are schooling, but some bass go shallow to school, some bass go deep. Those deep fish can be difficult to reach, especially with a reaction bait. You know, a blade bait, a tail spinner, a big deep diving crankbait, like a 10XD. Those are some of the ways that you can reach them, but probably the most effective way to reach those truly deep water fish is the jigging spoon. Now, Tim did a great spoon video a few weeks back about flutter spoons, which is his bread and butter. He loves that flutter spoon. He's so passionate about it, and I've seen him catch so many fish doing it. I go the other direction. I am equally passionate and equally deadly with the jigging spoon. Between us, we've created this perfect system where if the fish are a little shallow, he's on them with a flutter spoon from like a foot or two of water, all the way out to 20, 30 foot. I pick up that jigging spoon anytime those fish are past, say, 12 or 14 feet of water, and then you can catch them in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. Deep water fish, because a spoon gets down there and fishes effectively at virtually any depth. So what I wanna do with you, I'm gonna show you my exact spoon box. I'll pop it open, explain the different baits, what the baits are for, the colors that I use and why I use them. And then I'm gonna give you a couple of modifications. I'll also show you the rods that we use. It's specialized equipment. And then we'll stand up at the end. I'm actually going to stand up. We'll run out of here. We'll get out over some deep water. And I'll just show you the exact retrieves. I'll show you the do's and don'ts because the difference between smashing them with a spoon and doing terrible, never getting a bite or never knowing that you got a bite is all in the retrieve. So let's take a look at the box. This is my actual spoon box that I keep in the boat full time, particularly on this lake. It's my bigger spoons. Let's just open it up. So what we've got here, we've got the three quarter ounce, then we've got bigger, we've got two ounces, and then this is my bread and butter, the one and three quarter ounce. Those are the three sizes that I carry full time here on the river. Now I've got another box full of my smaller spoons, full of my one and a quarters full of the spoons that give you a little bit different flutter. But this shape, this longer, see if I can pull one out of here without getting stuck. That longer, more slender profile, day in and day out, that is my bread and butter. Those are the spoons that I swear by because they get a really unique fall. So let me pull one of each size out here. Now color wise, you'll notice there's some really, actually let me just pick the whole box back up and then we'll circle back around. Color wise, we've got some really natural tones. Okay, some chromes, chrome blue, chrome green, a lot of chartreuses particularly this one. This is a new color. This color is called Sierra. Here they are in the bigger size. This has become my number one color. My number one color was always Morning Dawn. This past year, I've done so much damage on that Sierra color. It's incredible. But you see a lot of chartreuses, then that Morning Dawn, that pink purple, and then a couple of really natural ones that I use here on the river, which is Perch, like a live finish, an actual photo finish. And then the, the shad. That's when those fish get really, really finicky. But my number one color is that Sierra. Number two color is Morning Dawn. Number three color is that UV Chartreuse. Again, size-wise, I've got these little guys. Then I've got the one and three quarters, my main spoon. 
And then I've got the two ounces, and the two ounces are a more recent addition. They're bigger. Not a ton bigger though. You hear two ounce, you'd think it's huge. It's really not. Here's a two ounce next to a one and three quarter. Okay, it's it's no big deal. So don't let the fact that it's a two ounce spoon or a one and three quarter ounce spoon intimidate you. Here's a one and three quarter next to a three quarter. And the three quarter I would consider a pretty small spoon. Okay, so don't let the weight bother you. The weight is nothing. That is just how quickly you get down to bottom. So I recently added two ounces to the box because in the past, one and three quarter was my heaviest spoon. That was my main spoon. But out here, we're on Chickamauga. You guys know that. It's part of the Tennessee River system. The Tennessee River has a lot of flow. In the West, we fished plenty of current. We spent years and years on the California Delta. We fished some actual river systems but I was not prepared for the amount of current that the Tennessee River has. I experienced it for the first time a few years ago when we were out just fishing our way through this part of the world. We were on Pickwick and it was flowing hard. Guys in the West, the amount of current that flows out here, picture the California Delta on a hard outgoing tide and you're sitting in one of those Frank's openings and that water's blowing by you literally the entire lake, not the backwater arms, but the entire main body, wall to wall flows that hard. It's incredible how much current, how much water moves through this part of the country. So to get down and stay down out here on the main river, if you wanna throw a spoon on the ledge, a two ouncer makes all the difference. So you guys that are here fishing that deeper water and you wanna do it in the current, go to the two ounce spoon, don't even hesitate. Because otherwise, by the time you drop it and you start to hop that spoon, it's passing the boat. It's drifting out the back end and you're not staying on the fish. So don't be afraid of that two ounce spoon. I wouldn't throw a two ounce shaky head or a two ounce jig, but a two ounce spoon is nothing. So back to these spoons, what the different styles and everything are for. In the bigger sizes, the one and three quarter, the two ounce, these guys have that more slender profile, but these are all, every single thing in that box was a dust spoon. <laughs> it's a Blade Runner dust spoon. The reason why I throw these is because they're not just that typical jigging spoon that you think of, that straight sided, dead action, straight to the bottom, lift it up, straight to the bottom, lift it up. I don't like that style of spoon. We do something completely different. And again, I'll show you in a minute with the actual retrieves. But what these spoons do is they have this amazing flutter. So you hop them up, but when you let them go, they just flutter and they twist and they rock and they flash and they throw all sorts of light and they just get bit so consistently. And some of these crazy colors, I mean, they get bit so much better than chrome. It's incredible day in and day out. This again, this is that actual Sierra color, that new one. I started throwing it last year, right at the end of the year, threw it all through this year, and it has become my number one. It's essentially chartreuse blue and white in a UV, so you get a ton of flash out of it. That is an amazing color. You know, in a big deep crank, chartreuse blue is one of our favorite colors. It made sense it would be in a spoon too. We've thrown that chartreuse forever. When he added a chartreuse blue, I had to try it and it, it smashes. So these spoons get this fantastic fall, fantastic flutter, even out of the big sizes. It's not this just straight up and down silly thing. Now, there are some times to throw different styles of spoons. Um, let me show you a couple more of those and then I'll circle back. I'll show you a modification to these spoons I've been playing with. So two others, one is this guy. This is another Blade Runner, and I'll link it in the video description. I'll link ex the exact sizes, each one, which colors I throw them in. But this one, see how it's this wider body? I throw this one less. I don't even keep it in my river box because it flutters too much. But I have it in my box with my smaller spoons. It's more of a panfish profile. If you are on a body of water that has a ton of crappie or a ton of bluegill, and the bass eat them a lot, in the fall, 
you know, they spawned earlier in the year. In the fall, this is the size of those panfish. You get these giant clouds and people will mistake them for shad. They're not shad, it's giant schools of baby crappie and baby bluegill. And this size profile, it just, it mimics that perfectly. If you're around crappie, this black shad color is by far the best imitator of that. But it's got a really good, really erratic, slower fall for its size. That's a great option. And then there's always going to be a time and a place where you need a small silver or silver and blue spoon. That's just, it's just the way it is. The cast master is a great option. The other one is this war eagle. We've thrown the cast master since we were kids, right? In all sorts of varying sizes, just steel stamped spoon. It shimmies a little bit on its way down, but it weighs a ton, it falls fast. The war eagle is more of that traditional spoon, but there's a time where you need to match that little bait. You know, if they're chasing that tiny stuff, they're not going to eat a one and three quarter consistently. So I always have these around. What I like about this war eagle in particular in that traditional jigging spoon is that it already comes set up. See, it's already got a swivel on it straight out of the package and it's already got an EWG style hook. It's got a really good sticky sharp hook. So you want to keep a couple of little spoons in the arsenal and some lakes your bait fish are always tiny. This will be your main gig. But as, what I've found as I've traveled around the country that one and three quarter ounce, almost everywhere I've ever gone, just smashes, it just catches fish. But have a little guy with you, and if you were going to do it, that War Eagle will do it without you having to buy extra components. Take a cast master, pull the hardware off it, change it all out, add a swivel. So, there's a time and a place for little guys. Back to these bigger ones, here's a trick for you. Let me show you something I've been playing with quite a bit this fall. These dust spoons, they're made of lead. They're not steel, they're not stamped. As a result, they're a little bit malleable, meaning you can bend them, okay? This year, play with the bent spoon. Now it is going to spiral like a son of a gun when you go to reel it up. So if you don't wanna destroy your entire spool, you should be putting a swivel on all of your spoons anyway. I keep a little pile of them in here. Just standard swivels. Doesn't matter which one. Just get a swivel on there, whether that's a power swivel or a ball bearing swivel, whatever it is. The Blade Runners come with a solid hook. They come with great split rings. I don't change any of that. I just add the swivel to the top. Unless I'm going to be around big fish. So more often than not anymore, I do find myself changing the hooks. It's funny, a few years ago, I never changed the hooks, but I caught a lot of one to three pound fish on a spool, on a spoon, even four pound fish. So there it is on a swivel. That bent spoon will have a slower, way more erratic fall. And you can, you can change how bent, right? We're back almost to flat, but not quite. Play with that spoon, change the shape, and you'll be surprised, the action will change, and you can find key actions that those fish will just smash on. And it'll change, but you can change with it. Trick for you. So anyway, I was catching smaller fish on the spoon for years and years. In more recent years, as I've gotten better with a spoon, I find myself catching a lot more big fish, big smallmouth, big spots, giant largemouth, and then particularly striper. The spoon is one of the best striper baits there is. So if you are catching big fish, it's important that you change that hook. We don't change the rings, the rings are good. But the hook, if you want a sticky, sharp, lighter wire hook, you just want to make sure you're getting your fish, an owner ST36, that's a 1X hook. Okay, so wire size is the same, but it's sticky sharp. Put that on there. If you're going big fish, ST56, owner ST56, that's a 3X hook. That's the strong hook. 
That's what I use for big largemouth and striper. Okay, if I'm gonna be around smallies and spots, a 1X hook is great. It's sticky sharp, it sticks them really, really good, and you're probably not gonna have an issue with getting bent out. But when, it's, when you're talking big ones, 3X hook all day long, change them out, never look back. Swivel on the front, 3X hook on the back, and go to work. When you hook those fish, it's solid, and you just grind them up, and you get them in the boat just as fast as you can. Now that's easy to say. You hook a 25, 30 pound striper, <laughs> horsing them up, getting them in the boat is a whole nother ball game. They are gonna wreck your world on their way to the boat, but you can do it and you can do it over and over and over again. Just a few weeks back, we took you guys out striper fishing with us. That was just the tip of the iceberg with that spoon. We went back up and just meleeed those fish. I took Cece, I took Sierra, Tim took his family. We caught a pile of great big striper all on that one and three quarter and two ounce Blade Runner. All right, so modifying those spoons. The only other thing that you can do if your fish are finicky, clear water, you're spooning, you can see them on the electronics, but you can't get them to bite. What you can do is go to a feathered treble hook. Sometimes it makes a difference. You'll notice I don't have a single feathered treble hook sitting in my box, not one, because usually it doesn't matter. But I carry them in my hook box. I carry an entire dedicated box of treble hooks. I carry them in that. And if I get in a pinch, if I'm hopping that thing and I'm watching the fish on my screen, going, they look like spaghetti when they're active. You're dropping down in there and that spaghetti's following your spoon down, following it up, following it down, following it up, but they won't bite it. Sometimes that feathered treble will help get them to commit, but that's about all you can do. So that's the actual baits. Let's talk rods and then I'll get out over some deeper water. And I'm not on spoonfish here right now. The bite here is actually very, very tough this week. Uh, it'll pick up here in a couple weeks where in the heart of the transition, we need our water temp to drop a few degrees. So I'm not even gonna try and catch a spoonfish with you, but I'm gonna show you the exact retrieves, the way we hop them, the way that changes with water temperature to help you do it right. So the rods, the little guys, I actually throw on a jerk bait rod. My same 610 medium X pride. This rod has become so universal. When I first picked it up, when I first started preaching about this one rod, it was a dedicated jerk bait rod. Hands down, my favorite jerk bait rod at any price point. And they're not that expensive. They're in the mid 200s. So they're a mid priced rod, but it's the best jerk bait rod at any price point that I've ever found. But this year I found that it's so good for smaller spoons. I use it for poppers. I use it for smaller walking baits. I throw little jigs on it. I do all sorts of stuff with this rod. Um, it's become incredibly universal, not just my favorite jerkbait rod. So smaller spoons, I throw on that same rod and I do it for the exact same reason. It's got that stiffer tip section. So when I'm trying to snap that spoon, I can do it. It doesn't just bow up like a crankbait rod would. It'll actually snap that bait. But then when I hook up, same exact thing as a jerk bait, the midsection of that rod folds up because now I'm fighting that fish on a small treble hook and you get that perfect action out of the rod. Now for the bigger spoons, if you're just starting out throwing this stuff and you just wanna try it, see if it'll work for you, don't get a dedicated spoon rod, okay? I used a Dobbins Fury 704, so like a $109 rod. I used that rod to throw a spoon for years and I caught a ton of big fish on it, especially with that 1X, either a stock hook or that owner ST36, the 1X hook, either one. That Fury 704, that's a seven foot four power, so a medium heavy rod. Uh, that rod did great for years and years on big smallies, big spots, big largies. It was perfect, it, it was awesome. But if you are going to get a dedicated spoon rod, I have since really dialed it in for myself. I've gone to a longer but stouter rod. And the reason that I've done that, so two that I use a lot, is an X-Pride. 
Um, either the 7.2 or the 7.6 medium heavy. I use a ton. And then there's this one. This is a new one. This is the Zodius, they're brand new Zodius. It's got that totally different back end to it. They call it a monocoque material. But that rod, this is a 7.5 heavy, has become my number one rod for the bigger spoons. And there's a couple of reasons. So I've gone to that longer rod because I can really bow up on those fish and I can really bulldog against them. They're pulling hard on me, I'm pulling hard on them. And that longer rod is absorbing, but it's a stronger action to start with. It's a 7.5 heavy. It's a stout rod. So if I need to really bulldog, really horse them up, I can do it. I throw it on fluoro. Now, this is important. I have found in recent years that I have switched from braid to leader back to mostly fluoro for the spoon up to about 40, 45 feet of water. Okay, and actually it's Cece, my wife Cece, who is amazing at throwing spoons. She's way better than I am. Uh, she is the one that actually told me that cutoff. She's the one that noticed after about 40, 45 feet, you just can't put it to them hard enough. You just can't smash those fish and grind on them the way you need to on fluoro. So if I'm going deeper, I go braid to leader still. But shallower than that, I like that fluorocarbon. It's heavy line, 20 pound line. And 20 pound is key. Whether that's a 20 pound fluoro main line, or I'm throwing a 40 or 50 or 65 pound braid, doesn't matter. But a 20 pound mono leader on that, or a fluoro stretch leader, a shock leader. But 20 pound is key because the line itself has a lot of body. See how it wants to just stay stiff? It doesn't just curl up and ball up like light line. This heavier line wants to stay rigid. So as you're pulling that spoon and you're dropping it and that bait's fluttering, it's less likely to come around and catch on that line. You will foul up less with 20 pound than you would with 10 or 14 or 15 pound. Okay, so even though you may not need 20 pound line, especially in cleaner water, it will make your actual fishing so much easier. So back to this Zodius, why this particular rod? Let me show you. And this rod, they're available for pre-order. A handful of them came out and then they were gone, but they're supposed to be back in stock soon, but you can pre-order this right now. But look at the difference. This is the 7.6 X-Pride. This is a 7.5 Zodius. You see how much longer that butt section is? Let me try and get my fat hands out of the way for you. See how much longer that butt is? When I'm spooning, I spend a lot of time with that rod tucked, especially when I'm fighting the fish, but you're hopping that spoon. I like that thing touching back here. I have more power. When I go to smash that hook set, I can instantly tuck it in and really fight those fish. If I've got a big fish on, if I've got a striper on or a big largemouth, then you just bury that rod in your armpit and you just grind on them, it's way, way easier. So that longer butt section with a spoon makes a huge difference. Now again, that's for dedicated spoon fishing. That's where you wanna worry about something like that. If you guys just wanna try it, grab a medium heavy rod, give it a go. But if you're getting a spoon rod, get the right spoon rod. So X-Pride 7276, but lately that Zodia 75 heavy. Now, because it's a heavy, again, upgrade those hooks, 3X trebles. All right, enough of that. I'll link all that in the description to keep it simple. Let's run out of here. I'll get out over some deeper water. water. I'm gonna rig up a couple of spoons and I'm gonna show you the exact retrieves, how we do it and when to change between them. All right, guys, I've gone ahead and got up against a bluff wall here. With the guys back on clear, like very reminiscent of Shag Rock or Henderson. I'm sitting in 29 and a half feet of water right up against the bluff, but I've got a dead flat bottom out here. Perfect place to show you. So we're sitting in 30 feet of water. First things first, I'm gonna send this spoon down to bottom. Here's a trick for you. If I let this spoon go and I just give it slack, it'll do this all the way to bottom. It'll take forever. There's seven or eight feet of line. Here's how long it takes to get that line out. Okay, it's tight. That's with an ounce and three quarter. 
if I keep my thumb on the spool and just put a little tension, this thing will go to bottom like a bullet. It's just a pencil falling to bottom and I make it, I'm already down 30 foot. Okay, so if you're fishing deeper water and you wanna get the spoon down quick, keep your thumb on the spool to get it down there. Now, keep that in mind when it comes to retrieve time, okay? Because it's the tension on the line that keeps the spoon straight, that keeps it falling. The biggest mistake that I see anglers make is that when they hop that spoon, they follow it back down with the rod on a tight line, okay? Now that doesn't matter if I'm hopping it little hops like this, or if I'm full pulling that thing, giant hops. Whatever a guy's doing, if you're going back down on a tight line, your spoon is flying up and penciling back down, and it looks like garbage. And that is the number one reason that you can't catch a spoon fish. So, I'm gonna find the bottom. There's bottom. I like to reel down until my rod's maybe a foot off the water, okay? And then I'm gonna pull that spoon up, and then I'm gonna give it semi slack line and follow it back down. Pull it up, semi slack all the way back down. The reason why is that if you're going down on a tight line, it's a pencil. If you're going down on completely slack line, that bait is falling all over the place. It's falling through the fish. Fish are coming out and eating it. And because you have all that slack, you have no idea that it's ever happened you will miss so many bites on a fully slack line. So when I say semi-slack, what I mean is it's actually 100% slack, but only enough to let the spoon fall. There's not an extra foot or two or five or 10 feet of slack floating around there. There's an extra couple of inches of slack so that if a fish whacks that thing on the way down on that slack line, I'm tight enough that I feel it. Now the bites on these things, there's essentially three different things that are gonna happen. One is you're gonna be following back to bottom, you're, following, you're falling down, and it just goes wham! They hit that thing hard. And sometimes they do, they crush it. That's one. Number two is you won't feel a thing but when you go to lift back up for your next hop, it's tight. So when you go to hop it back up, all of a sudden, that's a hook set, okay? Number three is you go to hop it and there's nothing there. That is a sure sign that you had too much slack. What happened is your bait's fallen back to bottom and a fish ate it and took off. And a lot of times as they're coming up, they keep coming up with that bait in their mouth and you didn't feel a thing and the next time you went to hop, you've got all your leftover slack plus all the slack the fish added to the line. You might have 10 feet of slack there with a fish on or there was a fish on, he's probably spit it by then. So that is really important. Just enough slack to let the spoon flutter, okay? Now, as far as how hard to pull the spoon, the colder the water, the softer. So if the water is ice cold, you might just see us going like this. I am literally just flipping the spoon on the bottom. It's barely even coming off the bottom, okay? Warmer water, you'll see us do this a lot. And I'm not pulling as far as it looks like because that first foot, foot and a half, all I'm doing is getting that extra slack out. See that right there, I'm finally on the spoon. So I'm only pulling the spoon a foot to 18 inches on that hop. The hotter the water, the more you can pull. You can pull that thing way up and then follow it down. Way up, follow it down. Now, I see a lot of people pull a spoon too hard. There's a time and a place for it. There's a time for this business, right? The fish are aggressive, they're feeding hard. They will go after that spoon just being ripped but I'm not here to teach you the one-off things that will work occasionally. I wanna show you guys the most consistent. And if you wanna play from there, you can play, fine tune it on a given day. But about here, 
about there. Two, two and a half foot hop, day in and day out, that's the deal. That's where the most consistent bites come from. We'll let this boat run by us and then I'll show you a little bit more. But that is the key. So let that thing fall to bottom on tension, get it down there quick, then focus on how much, how hard you're hopping and semi-slack going back down. That's how you're gonna catch those fish. Now, when you're actually throwing the spoon, what you're looking for on your electronics, let me grab you right now and I'll show you. You're gonna see a blank screen. There's nothing to see right now. We're not on a stored fish. But here's what we have right now. So we've actually come out off the bank. We're at the 24 foot now. We were in 30 foot in there tight. 24 foot, dead flat, right? No real fish. There's a fish back there. There was a couple of fish down there. But see how this, so on a screen like this, a fish, if you're sitting still, will look like a line under you. If you're going fast, they'll look like an arch, okay? It'll be a curve. So this fish was sitting under, so just straight line, and then he swam down to bottom. So this one and this one, the more I'm staring at this, that's actually the same fish. He was just under us for a little while. This fish, one like that, you can try and drop a spoon on them and occasionally you'll catch them. But what I wanna see on this screen, see how it's, a, it's moving like that? I wanna see spaghetti all over this screen. I wanna see five or 10 or 15 or 50 of those lines all over the place. That's your perfect real world scenario. A screen that looks like spaghetti. Now on that screen, you can dial this thing in let me grab this and I'll show you. All right, I'm gonna drop this spoon straight down under the boat. If you watch the right edge of the screen, you see my spoon coming down? You'll see it right there, I hit bottom. If I start to hop that spoon, you can see it where it was actually, here's where it came down and here's where it's doing little hops on the bottom and there is literally a fish there. And if I wasn't trying to hold a camera and a rod and everything else, we'd try and catch him really quick. But those little hops are key. What that's showing you is that if you dial in the sensitivity, we've got a big old boat running by. If you dial in the sensitivity on your electronics, you can not only see the fish, you can see what your spoon is doing. Now here's why that matters. You are looking for schools of fish. Okay, that's what you wanna drop a spoon on, not one-offs. You can catch a one-off, but if you're going to put in the effort, find a big old wad of fish. When you drop your spoon, here's what I've found. If it's spotted bass, I like to stop my spoon because I can see my spoon on the screen. I like to stop my spoon above the fish. Hop it a few times and you'll actually see them notice it. They actually start to swim up. I stop three or four or five feet above their heads. As soon as I have their attention, free spool and let that spoon flutter all the way down. And that whole school of spotted bass will turn and follow it to bottom. Once they're down there committed to that spoon, you start hopping and you'll catch those fish. Now, large mouth and small mouth, I tend to get under them. I actually let the spoon flutter right through the school, get down below, then I start hopping. A lot of times I hop the spoon on the bottom. It's the easiest when it's on the bottom because you know where you are. But if your electronics are dialed in and the fish are suspended, a lot of times in the fall drawdown, Tim will do some really detailed stuff with fall drawdown here soon. But a lot of times when lakes are drawing down, bass will back out and suspend. So they might only be 20 feet down over 100 feet of water or 40 feet down over 50 feet of water, whatever it is. If they're way up off the bottom, you don't wanna be spooning on bottom. So spotted bass, you stop above them, then fall through. Small mouth and large mouth, I like to just fall through. Spots are a funny animal. It's like they're curious. 
So they'll follow that thing around a lot more. The others fall through them, but if they're suspended, don't go all the way to bottom. Just fall five or 10 feet below them. Let them come down to it and work it. You can catch them just as effectively on the bottom or up in the water column. Spooning is awesome, man. It is so much fun to catch these fish with that thing because it is a true reaction bite at any depth. How else are you gonna get a reaction bite going in 40 or 50 feet of water? You just can't. Now, once you hook these fish up, this is important because these are deep water fish. Get them up and get them right back down. Horse them to the boat. If you're not horsing a fish on a one and three quarter ounce spoon, they're gonna shake it, especially when they get to the surface. They're gonna come up like a rocket, jump and throw that spoon. So get them up as fast as you can, get them in the boat. But because you're catching them out of deep water, you need to immediately unhook them and turn them loose. If you turn them loose right away, they can shoot back down. They're totally okay. If you try to keep those fish on board, take a bunch of pictures of them, live well them, they're gonna blow up like a balloon and the mortality rate is going to go sky high. You can, if you're in a tournament, you can needle those fish to try and help them. But even so, the mortality rate is much, much higher. If you're spooning deep water, get those fish up, get them right back down. That's the best thing you can do. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'll link all the gear, the rods, the reels, the baits, my electronics, all that stuff to try and help you down in the video description. But again, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.